So today on House Highs, I am here with Mr. Winston Osmore. Thank you so much, Winston, for joining us. Thank you so much. He is a mortgage broker who has been in the business for over 15 and a half years. And we're going to dig deeper into, number one, your credit score, which is probably one of the most important items necessary to secure a mortgage. And the second part would be the financial aspect and the amount of savings that you need and that's required from you. So welcome. Thank you so much, Gabrielle. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here today. I, as she said before, I'm, I'm a licensed mortgage broker here in the state of Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia. I have helped uh, probably over a few thousand customers over the years. Just kind of want to talk briefly about uh, what we do or what I do as a mortgage broker uh, and how we can help those particular customers uh, with the purchasing the American dream. Um, one of the things that, that we do is, is that uh, one of the things that we, we recommend for our customers is to make sure that our customers would at least um, sign up with some kind of credit monitoring company. Uh, because I think it's important that every customer have some sort of minimal education idea. in terms of knowing yeah. or an idea of knowing what their credit score is before they call Absolutely. a mortgage person. So they could at least give them some kind of idea of what their credit score is, which we will be able to lead the conversation and try to see um, uh, how we can best uh, fit a mortgage uh, that's gonna meet their financial needs Love and it. so forth. The, a mortgage broker, uh, the, the unique thing about a mortgage broker, the difference between a mortgage broker and a traditional loan officer from a bank is that a mortgage broker has several different lending institutions that's available uh, that will provide an array of, of products and services to the customer. That's one of the biggest unique. I love it. Are. Let's dig a little bit deeper, Winston, and talk to me a little bit about what your credit score can be. I know you are phenomenal at getting not your traditional buyer approved with a mortgage. You, you can get it done when, when most traditional banks cannot, from my experience in working with you. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, traditionally speaking, it just really depends on the type of mortgage program um, that we're going to do. As a, you know, if, we, if we're looking at government type loans, government mm -hmm. products, you know, we have the ability essentially to do mortgage for individuals down to a 580 credit score. And when I say government products, you know, I'm more so talking about FHA loans, VA loans uh, and USDA loans. Mm -hmm. um, uh, on the other hand, conventional loans. Uh, which are loans that have to com confide and make sure that they, they meet the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac guidelines, mm -hmm. uh, we could do customers uh, essentially down to six, 620 credit score That's for awesome. those customers That's pretty as well. Awesome. So with the lower credit score individuals or buyers, what are the requirements as far as trade lines, um, debt to income ratio? Let's dig a little bit deeper because of course, ideally, you will want to have at least a 620 credit score, but again, he's a mortgage broker. So depending on your unique situation, he can shop you around and hopefully get you financed with a little bit lower credit score. But with that lower credit score comes a few challenges as well. Well, here's one of the things that we're seeing. We understand now that the interest rates are, 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 uh, have, have increased uh, over the last year, but what we're seeing is that uh, there is an automated system that was generated to to uh, to underwrite loans automatically, okay. and uh, anybody who meets those requirements of an approval on those particular auto, through that automated system, um, as long as you can prove um, uh, the parameters of that approval, that loan is sellable. So what we're essentially seeing. That you know, essentially on government loans, if you got a 620 credit score, sometimes it usually asks that they have uh, established credit, um, uh, you know, maybe no lates or anything like that. And a lot of times, when that credit score generally gets below 640, we used to see, 
you know, that they ask for two months reserves. But what we're seeing, and I think that they're, they're making that system a little bit more flexible so that even though the interest rates are higher, that, that it'll, it's allowing uh, more lower credit score bars, the ability to be able to purchase a property. So what we've found is that, uh, you know, just by virtue of, of be running some customers, I've seen now that, that the, it's a lot easier now to get customers approved through that automated system with credit scores down to 580. So the myth of getting finance being tough, it's kind of going a, a, away a little bit, would you say? Yeah, it is. I, I think that, you know, right now, the uh, I guess the lending industry is just trying to be a little bit more flexible right. uh, uh, to be able to encompass, you know, lending money to more borrowers. Mm -hmm. And uh, but we see that system a little bit more flexible. We see underwriting is becoming a lot more flexible. Um, uh, generally, individuals who have lower credit scores, when they get in a government loan, uh, a lot of times they ask for for rent, mm -hmm. uh, rent rental histories. Uh, the debt to income ratios are having to be a little bit more conservative. But what we're seeing now is that now in these systems, they're allowing bars who have lower credit scores mm -hmm. down to 580 to actually carry a debt to income ratio as high as 50 percent, oh, which wow. is previously, um, you know, 45 percent is probably the I max. Of, right. uh, and even that system is even approving those particular loans on conventional clients. And conventional loans has normally been very conservative as it relates to the debt to income ratio. Right. Now you can get a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac conventional loan, have a 620 credit score, only put 3% down and carry a debt to income ratio of high, as high as 50% with no rental history. That is pretty or phenomenal. Or trade line requirements. That is pretty phenomenal because most people that have never bought a home or purchased a home, first time home buyers are petrified when you mentioned getting approved, what my credit score should be, oh, I may not qualify. And most individuals end up renting forever and they don't realize that the same amount of money that you spend per month in rent, you can actually own your own home. So absolutely. that's great. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, many buyers are just really scared of the process, really. Mm -hmm. And absolutely. you know, they just think that sometimes, you know, they have a, a late on a credit card or they've got some collection accounts and so forth that that will probably disqualify them for a mortgage. Mm -hmm. That's actually not true. That's right. Uh, because on most government loans, the federal government would allow you to carry in aggregate about $2,000 in collections and not have to pay those off. Oh, no, I did not even know that. That's if you have medical collections mm -hmm. uh, on any government loans, um, we look at those uh, as extenuating circumstances. Yeah. So medical collections do not have to be paid off. And, and medical um, companies, and, and not to get off track, but medical companies are so quick to put items on your credit report. So I'm glad that the housing market is understanding that and realizing that. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So what we, you know, I mean, sometimes customers that come to me have unique situations and circumstances. Um, you know, they may have had a previous bankruptcy um, you know, right now for government loans, if, you, if you've had a Chapter 7 bankruptcy where you actually discharge everything, mm -hmm. you know, you're eligible. Um, you become eligible to purchase a home as long as you've been discharged for two years. Okay. Um, uh, on Chapter 13, which is like a debt consolidation, it gets a little tricky. Um, uh, but for the most part on government loans, you, you, you're eligible to purchase a house as long as you've been in a Chapter 13 for one year. Mm -hmm. However... Um, uh, the courts have to give you permission to enter into a mortgage. Gotcha. And I've done about two of those this year. That's pretty, um, awesome. pretty awesome. You know, so uh, conventional loans, a little bit tricky, mm -hmm. you know, on that. But, you know, government loans gives you a lot of flexibility. Like Foreclosures, government loans, you know, you you've, you've definitely need to be, uh, uh, the seasoning on that foreclosure needs to be three years or more. Uh, from a conventional standpoint, you're not eligible unless it's been about seven years and anybody who've had a short sale, you know, from a conventional standpoint, mm -hmm. you've got to wait four years on government loans. You only have to wait three years for that. Well, that is great information. Thanks for sharing that with our customers. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Winston. I've learned quite a bit more. Um, I've already uh, been working with you for several years, so I appreciate your knowledge and your insight and your creative ability to get those tough clients approved. So I appreciate that. Tell our viewers how pe they can get in touch with you. Yes, uh, my company is called NMI Mortgage Funding, and we're located in Hoover at 2171 Clearbrook Road, Hoover, Alabama, 35226. Our office number is area code 205-940-9660. Uh, you can also catch me on my cell phone. My cell phone number is 
six zero five zero. A lot, a lot of many, many mortgage guys will give out their. I was cell just phone. about to say. Uh, I was surprised about that. <laughs> I'm a very personable individual, and I, you know, I, you know, I like what I do. I have a passion for the mortgage industry, and uh-huh. I don't want to just do a good job with my customer. I will. I, I really like to exceed my customers' expectations. That's right, and get those referrals and repeat business. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> thank you. Okay. coming up next on House Heist. Sure, sure. So the building, this was the uh, the Federal Reserve building until 1992 when they moved out to Liberty Park. Okay. Uh, there are five, uh, five or six vaults, six vaults in the building. Wow. Uh, wow. That housed all the money and gold that the yeah. Federal Reserve had. Primary Care gives you an all-access pass to your doctor for a low monthly membership fee. This means unlimited visits, emails, text messaging, and virtual chats. There is no deductible and no copay. Give Dr. Korea a call today for more information. That's at Brownstone Total Family Healthcare, 205-202-5650. is here tailgating for alabama auburn or magic city classic or maybe you want to go lavish this prom season let us help you do it in style lavish limo service is a luxury chauffeured limo service located in the birmingham area we offer the latest model vehicles book us for your proms wedding tailgate or any special or corporate event to book your next lavish event visit us at www.lavishlimoservice.com. Fully licensed and insured with certified drivers. So today here, we're here at the historic Federal Reserve Building, the home of Robinson Banking Company. Um, Mr. Whit Bird is here today with us. Mr. Whit, why did y'all choose this location for your branch? Well, we're, we're one of the oldest banks in the state, formed in 1870, so we were looking for an old location. We wanted to be downtown uh, with all the activity going on, and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and that's just where all the action was. We wanted to be in the middle of it, and okay. we're appealed to the building by the age of it, with the age of our bank, and that's why we chose it. Okay. 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 So, Mr. Witt, is this your only branch, or do you have other locations? Uh, it's our first and only location so far in Birmingham. We just opened it up last December. Uh, but we're headquartered in Demopolis, Alabama. Okay. Uh, been around since 1870, as I said before. We have four offices in Marengo County, okay. two offices in Tuscaloosa, and, and one here now. Did I read uh, correctly that this is one of the oldest banks in the state of Alabama? It is. It is almost 150 years old, so we've wow. been around for a long time. Wow. Wow. Are those guys still around? <laughs> <laughs> not quite. Not quite. <laughs> now, what is Robinson Bank? What are you known for? What is your specialty here? Uh, Our specialty here is uh, we do a lot of, on the lending side, a lot of commercial real estate. Real estate in general uh, is kind of our our bread and butter. Um, In in Marengo County, we're much more focused on the retail side of things, given just the nature of the the market. But here in Tuscaloosa, a lot more on the commercial side when it comes to lending. Okay. Okay. And here in Birmingham, you pretty much a commercial side of lending too as well? Yes. Yes, we do. Mostly... A lot of real estate, my background's in commercial real estate, okay. and so it's a natural fit, and, uh, and we do a lot of commercial real estate lending. So let's say I'm a, I'm a guy coming in, wanting to do business with you guys. I found this beautiful 10,000 square foot building located downtown Birmingham. 
what are the requirements for me as an investor to get, get financing from uh, Robertson Banking Company? Sure, sure. Uh, we're going to look at things uh, like experience in real estate, how, you know, how much experience you have uh, with those type of projects. Uh, we'll need to get uh, some personal financial information, uh, personal financial statement, a couple of years of tax returns. Uh, if it's uh, if it's an investment property, we'll want to see a rent roll, see who's in the building, what the lease structure looks like, uh, what kind of uh, net operating income the building generates. If it's vacant or you know to be developed, what the pro forma projected uh, net operating income is. And so we'll look at the both the project. Uh, the market characteristics around it, how strong the market is for that particular type of building, okay. and then and then look at the uh, the personal financial strength of the sponsor as well. Okay. Okay. So basically, you're a commercial bank. You don't really look at residential, but do y'all have residential products here too as well for investors? For sure. 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 We, do, we do. We do. We do. We finance. Uh, you know, some home builder finance for home builders. We do. We do consumer construction loans. Okay. Uh, we do. Residential purchase uh, loans, uh, a five-year arm, which is an adjustable rate mortgage, so it's a five-year balloon. We do not have a long-term, you know, 15, 20, 30-year fixed-rate product in-house. We would refer that out to one of our partners, but uh, we do do residential as well. So what is an actual arm? Um, what is it just that? it means as opposed to going and getting a, you know, a 30-year fixed traditional mortgage where that rate is fixed for the full 30 year term. This rate is fixed for five years and at the end of five years, it's gonna adjust to whatever the rate is at that time. Okay, okay. Um, sort of like a, a HELOC uh, or, an, or line of credit pretty much or? Uh, it's, it's, well, it's, it's not revolving, it's a, it's a term loan, okay. but it is, uh, the primary difference is really just the, the term of the fixed rate. Gotcha. And so if somebody was only gonna be in their house, say, for a couple of years, they yes. knew it might be a good product for them, okay. as opposed to, um, you know, because it may be uh, a little cheaper, easier to get mm -hmm. than, a, um, than a full 30 year fixed traditional mortgage. Okay. So it might be a, that might be the reason we okay. want to get okay. that. And uh, let's say we are, an out-of-state investor comes into uh, Birmingham and would like to invest in it because it is a growing city, and I think that's the reason you're down here, if Absolutely. I'm correct. Um, what if they wanted to invest in the city of Birmingham, but they're from out of state? How would you vet those uh, clients right there? We uh, we look at them a little differently. Okay. Uh, we are very much a relationship-driven bank. We want to have relationships and know our clients. Uh, if it's somebody coming to town that's just coming in for a one-time transaction, yes. it may not be a fit for us. We want the guy that's coming into town and he wants to stay here. Okay. He's going to, and when I say stay, I mean investment-wise. Yes. So yes. he's, he's going to come in, he's going to be buying other properties, he's going to want to deposit with us, he's going to want other type of uh, services we have. So uh, we would vet him the same way uh, okay. as far as the financials and the project itself, but we want somebody that we can kind of have a relationship with. and. You know, he's going to be a little different in that he's not an existing customer. He's not somebody in the market that we know. So okay. we will have to probably kind of look into his experience and background a little more than we might just because we don't know them. Okay. What do you see the, the future of Birmingham? I, I know you, you say you wanted to be here in the middle of action. Where do you see Birmingham growing? You know, right now the action, a lot of the action is downtown. Yes. Uh, everybody, you know, we, we need more job growth. Okay. Uh, that's the main, the outside job growth. We have a lot of folks moving around town. Maybe they're moving from the suburbs or somewhere else downtown to a new building that's been redeveloped. It's a new, you know, cool space. You know, yeah. the big thing is the companies are wanting to attract the millennials, so they yes. want to be able to attract millennials. And to do that, you've got to have a nice space. You've got to have the nightlife. You've got to have the walkability. So. Okay. Birmingham's taking the steps. We really are. Uh, we just have to get some of those companies coming in town. But um, but for now, I see downtown is, is the heavy growth area. Um, you know, that's where a lot of the action is. I think with everything that's going uptown, it's going to create a lot of growth up there with the new stadium and the old Caraway okay. uh, project. Um, the opportunity zones um, that are are new this year are bringing most of which Birmingham is in is bringing in a lot of activity okay. to downtown and um, I think that's where you're going to see a lot of the growth. So what exactly is an opportunity zone for those out there who who are not familiar with opportunity? Sure, uh, in in the real estate world, it is it is kind of like a 1031 exchange except for it's it's um, it's expanded beyond just real estate. But the difference is. 
if somebody sells an asset, whether it be a stock, a piece of real estate, you know, they can take those capital gains, okay. invest them in an opportunity fund, and defer that capital gains until 2026, at which time it's taxed at 85% of what the gain would have been instead of 100, you know, the 400%. Yes. Plus, uh, the new asset they invest into, if they hold it uh, the full 10 years, they maximize this, but at, at the end of 10 years, they could sell that property and pay no capital gains tax on oh, wow. it. So, uh, and you have to be in an opportunity zone to qualify. Uh, most of Birmingham, downtown Birmingham is, and okay. so that's gonna spur a lot of growth once everybody kind of realizes yeah. and what, what it's all about. That's gonna drive the city exactly where we want it to go. I think it's gonna play a big part in it, yeah. it sure is. We'll be right back. Primary Care gives you an all-access pass to your doctor for a low monthly membership fee. This means unlimited visits, emails, text messaging, and virtual chats. There is no deductible and no copay. Give Dr. Korea a call today for more information. That's at Brownstone Total Family Healthcare, 205-202-5650. is here. Tailgating for Alabama, Auburn, or Magic City Classic, or maybe you want to go lavish this prom season. Let us help you do it in style. Lavish Limo Service is a luxury chauffeured limo service. Located in the Birmingham area, we offer the latest model vehicles. Book us for your proms, wedding, tailgate, or any special or corporate events. To book your next lavish event, visit us at www.lavishlimoservice.com. Fully licensed and insured with certified drivers. the space here I see the vault open we've never seen a vault that's open we always see a vault that's closed <laughs> right so tell me a little bit about the vault situation and uh, tell me a little about the building too as well sure sure so the building this was the uh, the Federal Reserve building until 1992 when they moved out to Liberty Park okay uh, there are five uh, five or six vaults six vaults in the building Wow um, Wow that housed all the money and gold that the yeah. Federal Reserve had. Okay. Uh, everybody in the building kind of did something unique with their vault. Um, you know, we put a conference room in our vault. Okay. Uh, it's obviously not working as a working <laughs> vault anymore. Okay. Uh, there's a basement to this vault, okay. which is actually, there's jail cells down there where they kept prisoners that were on trial. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a tunnel that goes under the Fifth Avenue to the courthouse, so okay. they would transport them back and forth and hold them. Okay. And the holding cells downstairs, okay. so it's got a lot of neat history to wow. the building. That's amazing. So, yeah. anybody still underneath here that we know of? No, not that we know of. Okay. As long as people pay their bills, nobody gets locked in. Okay. The, locked okay. In the, in the vault. So. <laughs> Let's say, Mr. Wood, I walked in. I wanted to redo this property down the street. Um, it's about fifteen thousand square foot building. I want to turn into office spaces and uh, live, work, play, basically. What requirements would you have for me, or what information would you need for myself to? get that project, uh, first of all, secured a loan to purchase the building, and second of all, to secure a loan to actually fix the building up. Sure. Uh, as long as the timing's close enough, you know, we would do it as one, one loan, one closing, and purchase and acquisition and construction loan. Okay. Uh, we would need all the same information we would on an acquisition loan. Okay. 
In addition, we would want to see the budget okay. on what it's going to cost to, uh, you know, to fix it up, okay. uh, what the projected uh, income stream looks like after it's done, the timeline of it. Uh, and then we're going to um, you know, base our loan as opposed to just uh, you know, a loan to, loan to cost from a purchase uh, price. It's going to be based on the total budget. So the amount of equity is going to be derived from that total purchase and acquisition, okay. acquisition and uh, renovation cost. Okay. And, uh, and then, we, then we'll look at it just like we would if it's an acquisition. Okay. okay. So pretty much similar to, like you said, an acquisition, just need just a little bit more information. That's right. Yeah. And, and, you know, depending on the scope of it, we may be looking at things like who the contractor is going to be, okay. what their experience is. Okay. And then we're still going to look at the demand for that type of product, make sure it's feasible and, and that, that there's a demand for it in the market before you know, we would move forward. Okay. Sounds good to me. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. So I'll be bringing a project in here to you then. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> look forward to it. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. Witt, I would like to thank you for your time today and sharing the history of Robertson Banking Company with us and look forward to your success and all this growth that we have here in Birmingham. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate you coming thank by. You. Come yes, back time. Each week, we like to bring you one step closer to your dream home or your first investment. Thanks so much for watching. Awesome. So the myth of, of getting, so the myth of getting financed. So today we're None here. This is natural. I'm sorry. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> None See, of that's going to be on bloopers right yeah. there. That's a blooper. <laughs> so today we're here at the Federal Reserve Building, the home of Robinson. So anybody still underneath here that we know of? No, not that we know of. Okay. As long as people pay their bills, nobody gets locked in the, okay. Locked okay. in the, in the vault. So. Okay. So Mr. Witt, I want to thank you for your time today. And like I said, I love your location here. And if I can be an assistant to you or not, nah, let me stop. <laughs> I'm going Okay. Okay. We right better give a kiss to yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Witt, I'd like to thank you for your time today. And we appreciate the opportunity to come in and learn a little bit about Robertson Banking Company. I'm going to redo everything. So I'm just oh, giving my right. thoughts in my head. Robertson. So tell us a little bit about Robertson Banking Company. Uh, where are you located? Where are you out of? Or is this your only branch or I need to start over. We'll start over. I'm oh, sorry about that. Yeah, it's, it's not natural for me too. Yeah. So, so. Robertson. 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 Hey, you know, I'm, I'm from a country. I know. So I got a little list. <laughs> I think. Robertson. Robertson.